Welcome back. In this video, you will learn how to find the arc length of parametric curves. Let's get to it. All right, so towards the beginning of Calculus 2, we looked at how to find the arc length of a curve defined by a function in terms of x and y. But now what we want to do is find the arc length of a plane curve or parametric curve represented by parametric equations. And so if you take a look at this graph right here, we have a parametric curve or a plane curve represented by these two parametric equations, x equals small f of t and y equals g of t. And for this curve, we want to know the length of this particular section between these two values of x, x equals a and x equals b. How could we go about calculating the length of that curve? Well, if we were working in terms of x, meaning that this curve would be represented by y as some function of x, right? If we let y equals capital F of x also represent this curve, and we wanted to know the arc length of that function between those two values of x, a and b, on our graph here, we could calculate that arc length using this formula. This is the original formula that we used to calculate the arc length of a curve. That length was equal to the integral from a to b of the square root of one plus the derivative of the function that represents the curve squared and then times dx. All right, and so that is how we calculated the arc length when working in terms of x, but what if we wanted to work in terms of our parameter t? Well, what we can do, since y equals capital F of x and these parametric equations both would represent this curve, is make some substitutions in this arc length formula to convert it from being in terms of x to being in terms of t. And so the first thing that we can do is change our bounds of integration. Instead of integrating between two values of x, what we want to do is integrate between two values of t. What we can do is replace these x values with their corresponding t values right, what value of t would be this point right here along this curve that would correspond to this x value of x equals a, and what value of t would correspond to this point, which is where x equals b. Well, that's going to be different for every curve, but what we can do is represent it like this. We could have the integral from some lower bound of t, t sub 1, to some upper bound of t, t sub 2, where t sub 1 would correspond to the x value of a, and t sub 2 would correspond to the x value of b. All right, so instead of integrating from some x value to another x value, now we are integrating from some value of t to another value of t. All right, so our bounds of integration are now in terms of t, but what about the rest of our arc length formula? How can we rewrite the rest of this in terms of t? Well, we have this first derivative here, right? We have capital F prime of x. That is the first derivative of this function, y equals capital F of x. And so what we can do to rewrite that in terms of t is to use our formula for a parametric derivative, right? Remember that dy dx, the derivative of a set of parametric equations, is equal to dy dt divided by dx dt. The derivative of y with respect to t divided by the derivative of x with respect to t. But another way that we could write this is to say that capital F prime of x is equal to g prime of t divided by f prime of t, right? dy dx is the derivative of y with respect to x, which would be equal to the derivative of capital F of x. So we can rewrite dy dx with capital F prime of x, and then that would be equal to the derivative of y with respect to t. And y is defined by g of t, a function of t, so the derivative of y with respect to t would be g prime of t. And in the same way, the derivative of x with respect to t would be the derivative of small f of t. So that's why we can divide by small f prime of t. And so now what we can do is replace capital F prime of x in this formula with g prime of t divided by f prime of t. Now we could also replace it with dy dt divided by dx dt, but that's a lot more to write. We're going to be doing a little bit of manipulation with this formula to make it look nice. And so until we get to its final form, I'm going to work with g prime of t and f prime of t because it's a little bit easier to write, but in our final formula, we'll change back to dy dt and dx dt, and it will look pretty nice. But for now, let's rewrite this integral to be the square root of one plus g prime of t divided by small f prime of t squared, right? We're replacing capital F prime of x with what it's equal to 
which is the form of a parametric derivative. All right, and now all that's left to rewrite in terms of t is dx. And in order to find what dx would be equal to in terms of t, what we can do is take the derivative of x with respect to t, right? dx dt will be equal to small f prime of t, right? The derivative of our equation for x with respect to t would be the derivative of this function, small f of t. So dx dt is equal to small f prime of t. And then we can solve for dx by multiplying both sides by dt. So we would have dx is equal to small f prime of t dt. So we can replace dx in this integral with small f prime of t dt. All right, so we'll multiply by small f prime of t dt. And so now our integral that represents the arc length of this section of this plane curve is now in terms of t. Right, we have an integral with bounds of integration in terms of t. We have the square root of one plus our parametric derivative squared times small f prime of t dt. But now what we wanna do is simplify this a little bit. This is a pretty complicated formula as it stands and we can make it a whole lot simpler by doing some manipulation. And so if I clean up my work a little bit here, the first thing that I'm going to do is square each of these derivatives. We'll square g prime of t and square small f prime of t. So we'll have that the arc length is equal to the integral from t sub one to t sub two of the square root of one plus g prime of t squared divided by f prime of t squared. And then that's still multiplied by f prime of t dt. Okay, so we squared the numerator and the denominator of that parametric derivative. Now what we can do is rewrite one in such a way that we can combine it with this fraction, right? So in order to add one to this fraction, it needs to have the same denominator. And so what I'm going to do is rewrite one as small f prime of t squared divided by itself, right? Because anything divided by itself is one. So we can rewrite one to be small f prime of t squared divided by itself. We'll have small f prime of t squared in the denominator. So now what we can do is add these two fractions since they have the same denominator. So what we'll have is that this is equal to the integral from t sub one to t sub two of the square root of small f prime of t squared plus g prime of t squared all divided by that same common denominator of small f prime of t squared. And then that's still multiplied by small f prime of t dt. Okay, so all we did there was combine these two fractions to be one fraction since they had a common denominator. Now what we wanna do next is take the square root of the numerator and the denominator of this fraction separately, right? Because notice what's going to happen if we do that. If we take the square root of the numerator, nothing is going to simplify, but if we take the square root of the denominator, the square root of small f prime of t squared will just be small f prime of t, right? So let's write our integral like this. This will be equal to the integral from t sub one to t sub two of the square root of small f prime of t squared plus g prime of t squared, and that will be divided by the square root of small f prime of t squared. But the square root of a value squared will just be equal to that value. The square root and the square cancel out. So instead of having the square root of small f prime of t squared, we can just have small f prime of t in the denominator. And then this is still multiplied by small f prime of t dt. And now something really cool is going to happen. Notice that we have small f prime of t in the denominator and we're multiplying by small f prime of t. Those two functions will cancel each other out. We are dividing small f prime of t by itself, which is just equal to one. So we can cross those out and what we're left with is the integral from t sub one to t sub two of the square root of small f prime of t squared plus g prime of t squared times dt. And so now our arc length formula in terms of t is pretty much done. We have simplified it as far as we can. All I wanna do now is rewrite small f prime of t and g prime of t 
as dx dt and dy dt to finalize our formula. And so what we'll have is that the arc length of a parametric curve will be equal to the integral from t sub one to t sub two of the square root of the derivative of x with respect to t, right? If x is equal to small f of t, then small f prime of t is the derivative of x with respect to t. So we can rewrite that with dx dt, and that derivative is squared plus g prime of t, which is the derivative of y with respect to t, which can be rewritten as dy dt. So we will square that derivative dy dt and then multiply by dt. And this right here is our formula for calculating the arc length of a parametric curve. All right, and so to summarize what we just went through, the arc length of parametric curves can be calculated by using this formula. The arc length is equal to the integral from t sub one to t sub two of the square root of dx dt squared plus dy dt squared dt. All right, and then something to keep in the back of your mind is that this formula works provided that the parametric curve that we wanna find the arc length of is a smooth curve, meaning that there's no gaps or sharp points and the curve does not intersect itself for that range of t values where we wanna calculate the arc length. All right, so keep that in mind. Many of the curves that you are going to calculate the arc length of will meet those requirements. They will be smooth curves with no gaps or sharp points, but just know that this formula would not work if a parametric curve did have a gap or something between the two values of t where you wanna know the arc length. All right, but now that we have this formula, let's take a look at some examples of calculating the arc length of a parametric curve. All right, so here's our first example. We wanna find the arc length of the curve represented by the parametric equations on the given interval. And our parametric equations are x equals three t plus five and y equals seven minus four t. And then our given interval here tells us the two values of t for which we wanna calculate the arc length between. And those two values are negative one and three. All right, and so we have everything that we need to calculate the arc length. We just have to write down our formula and substitute in all of our values. So we know that the arc length is equal to the integral from t sub one to t sub two of the square root of dx dt squared plus dy dt squared dt. All right, so we need to know our two values of t, which we actually have right here and we need to know the derivative with respect to t of both of our parametric equations. So, so far we can say this, the arc length is equal to the integral from negative one to three of the square root of the derivatives of our parametric equations squared. So let's work on each of these derivatives. We'll start with the derivative of x with respect to t. Dx dt is found by taking the derivative of x, and so if we do that, dx dt will be equal to the derivative of three t plus five. The derivative of three t will be three because the derivative of t to the first power will just be equal to its coefficient. So our derivative is three and then the derivative of five is zero because five is a constant. And so we're just adding zero to three and so dx dt is just three. Now for dy dt, that will be equal to the derivative of seven minus four t. The derivative of seven will be zero because seven is a constant. The derivative of all constants is zero. And then we have negative four t. The derivative of that will be negative four because t is to the first power. So the derivative will just be the coefficient. So dy dt is equal to negative four. All right, so let's plug these values into our formula. We have the square root of dx dt squared plus dy dt squared. So we'll have three squared plus negative four squared. So I'll write that in. We'll have three squared plus negative four squared dt. Okay, so now we have our integral to calculate the arc length completely set up. All we have to do now is simplify and solve for the arc length. So first thing that we can do is square three and square negative four. So we'll have that the arc length is equal to the integral from negative one to three of the square root of nine plus 16 dt, right? Three squared is nine and negative four squared is 16. Now nine plus 16 is 25, and we have the square root of 25, right? So this is equal to the integral from negative one to three of the square root of 25 dt, but the square root of 25 is just five. So really this is equal to the integral 
from negative 1 to 3 of 5 dt. And so I'll rewrite that. We have the integral from negative 1 to 3 of 5 dt. Okay, and so we have a fairly simple integral to evaluate here. The integral of a constant is just going to be that constant times the variable of integration, which in this case is t, right? dt tells us that we are integrating with respect to t. So what we're going to have is 5 times t, and that will be evaluated from negative 1 to 3. And so we'll plug 3 into this expression and then subtract plugging in negative 1. So this will be equal to 5 times 3 minus 5 times negative 1. Now 5 times 3 is 15, and 5 times negative 1 is negative 5, so this is equal to 15 minus negative 5. But these two negatives will cancel out, so instead of having 15 minus negative 5, we'll have 15 plus 5. And 15 plus 5 is equal to 20. And so 20 is the arc length of the curve represented by these parametric equations between the values of t of negative 1 and positive 3. Okay, so this is a fairly simple example of calculating the arc length of a parametric curve, but let's look at a slightly more complicated example where the simplification and integration process is a little bit more difficult. All right, so here's our second example. Once again, we wanna find the arc length of the curve represented by the parametric equations on the given interval. This time our parametric equations are x equals 2t squared and y equals 3t cubed. And we wanna find the arc length between t equals zero and t equals one. Okay, so let's start out by writing out our arc length formula. We know that the arc length will be equal to the integral from some lower bound of t, t sub one, to an upper bound of t, t sub two, of the square root of dx dt squared plus dy dt squared and then that's all multiplied by dt. All right, and so, so far, all we know are the two values of t that we wanna integrate between. We know that our lower bound will be zero and our upper bound will be one. So we'll have that the arc length is equal to the integral from zero to one of the square root of dx dt squared plus dy dt squared. So now what we need to do is find dx dt and dy dt. And so let's start with dx dt. Let's take the derivative of x with respect to t. We'll have that dx dt is equal to the derivative of 2t squared. Now this is going to require the power rule for derivatives, so we'll multiply that exponent down and then subtract one from the exponent. So we'll have two times two, which is four, and two minus one is one. So we'll have four t to the first power. All right, and so that's dx dt, but then dy dt will be equal to the derivative of three t cubed, which will also require the power rule for derivatives. So we'll multiply that exponent down and subtract one from that exponent. So three times three is nine and three minus one is two. So we will have nine t squared. All right, and so now we have dx dt and dy dt. So let's substitute them in to our arc length formula. We'll have dx dt squared first and dx dt is four t. So we will have four t squared and that's going to be added to dy dt squared, and dy dt is 9t squared, so we will have 9t squared squared times dt. All right, so now we have our integral set up to calculate the arc length of our curve between the values of t from zero to one. Now all we have to do is simplify it and then integrate. So let's start by squaring these two expressions. 4t squared, we'll have to square four and t. Four squared is 16, and t squared is t squared. So this will be equal to the integral from zero to one of the square root of 16 t squared plus nine t squared squared. So we have to square nine and t squared. Nine squared is 81 and t squared squared will be t to the power of four, right? When you have a value raised to a power and you're raising that to a power, you multiply the exponents and two times two is four. So we'll have 81 times t to the power of four and then dt, okay? So now at this point, our integral doesn't look like it's in a form that we can easily integrate, right? We have a composite function of the square root of 16 t squared plus 81 times t to the power of four. There's no easy way to go about integrating this in its current form, but what we can do is simplify it just a little bit more. Notice that we have a common factor of t squared in both of these terms. We can pull that out of these two terms and if we do that, we'll have the integral from zero to one 
of the square root of t squared times 16 plus 81 times t squared dt. All right, so all we did was pull a t squared out of each of these terms. If you take t squared out of 16 t squared, you're just left with 16. And if you take t squared out of this term, that's the same as dividing by t squared. So dividing this term by t squared leaves us with 81 t squared, right? t squared times t squared would be t to the power of four. So we can rewrite those two terms like this. We just pulled t squared out of both of them. And now we can take the square root of each of these parts individually. We can take the square root of t squared and the square root of this quantity. And the square root of t squared is just t, right? t times itself is t squared. So our next step is to rewrite our integral like this. We'll have the integral from zero to one of t times the square root of 16 plus 81 t squared. And that will still be multiplied by dt. And now our integral is in a form that we can integrate pretty easily, right? We can use u substitution for this integral because I see a function and its derivative right? We have 16 plus 81 t squared. The derivative of t squared will be t to the first power because we multiply that exponent down and subtract one from the exponent. So t squared becomes t to the first power. And we have t to the first power on the outside of that function. So we could set u equal to this inside function. And then we will be able to replace t and dt with some term of du. So let's do that. Let's use u substitution here. We'll let u equal 16 plus 81 t squared, which means that du dt will be equal to the derivative of 16 plus 81 t squared. The derivative of 16 will be zero because 16 is a constant, but then the derivative of 81 t squared will require the power rule for derivatives. So we'll multiply that two down. 81 times two is 162. So we'll have 162 times t to the first power, right? We subtract one from that exponent, so we have t to the first power. Now, if we solve for du by multiplying both sides by dt, we'll have du is equal to 162t dt. And whatever du is equal to, we wanna be able to find that within our integral in order to rewrite it in terms of u. Now, in this case, I don't see 162t dt in this integral. I just see t and dt, so I don't see this 162. So let's divide both sides of the equation by 162, and we'll have du divided by 162 is equal to t dt. All right, so we can replace t dt with du divided by 162. So now we can rewrite this integral in terms of u. We will have that this is equal to the integral from t equals zero to t equals one, I'm writing t equals because we're gonna rewrite the rest of the integral in terms of u, and I don't want us to forget that these bounds of integration are still values of t, all right? So what we're going to have is the square root of u because we set 16 plus 81 t squared equal to u, so we're replacing that with u, and then let's replace t dt with du divided by 162 because that is what that is equal to, all right? So we'll multiply by du divided by 162. All right, now our next step is going to be to simplify this a little bit and then rewrite our bounds of integration to be in terms of u rather than t. That's going to help us solve this integral in terms of u rather than needing to convert back to in terms of t. So what we can do to simplify first is pull out this fraction of one divided by 162 to the outside of the integral. So this will be equal to one divided by 162 times the integral from t equals zero to t equals one. But let's rewrite these bounds from being in terms of t to being in terms of u. So we'll plug our lower bound of t into what we set u equal to, right? u is equal to 16 plus 81 t squared. If we replace t with zero, we'll have 81 times zero squared. That's just going to be zero. So we have zero plus 16. So u is equal to 16 when t is zero. So we'll have a lower bound of u equals 16. And then the upper bound is when t equals one. So if we plug one into this equation, we'll have 81 times one squared. One squared is one, so we have one times 81. So u will be equal to 16 plus 81. And 16 plus 81 is 97. 
So our upper bound, instead of t equals one, will be u equals 97. All right, and then let's write in the rest of our integral. I'm gonna rewrite the square root of u to be u to the one half power. That's the same thing, right? u to the one half power is the same as the square root of u. And then we're multiplying by du. We don't have du divided by 162 anymore because we pulled that one divided by 162 to the front of the integral. All right, and so now our integral is entirely in terms of u, so we don't need to worry about any of this work anymore. There's no need to convert back into terms of t. We can just integrate in terms of u and then evaluate at our bounds of integration since they are now in terms of u. All right, and so now we're ready to integrate and solve for the arc length of our curve represented by these parametric equations between these two values of t. So we can integrate u to the power of one half by using the power rule for integration. We'll add one to the exponent and then divide by that new exponent. So the arc length will be equal to one divided by 162 times u to the power of three halves divided by three halves, right? One half plus one is three halves. So our new power is three halves and then we divide by three halves. And that will be evaluated from 16 to 97. All right, now if we simplify this a little bit, dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal of that fraction. So instead of dividing by three halves, we can multiply by two thirds, right? We can find the reciprocal by just flipping the numerator and denominator of that fraction. So the reciprocal of three halves would be two thirds. So this will be equal to one divided by 162 times two thirds times u to the three halves power evaluated from 16 to 97. And now to make our lives a little bit easier, I'm gonna pull this two thirds outside of this evaluation. We'll just multiply two thirds by one divided by 162. And this will be equal to one divided by 162 times two thirds. And then we have u to the power of three halves evaluated from 16 to 97. All right, now 162 and two are both divisible by two. Two divided by two is one and 162 divided by two is 81, and 81 times three is 243, right? So this is equal to one divided by 81 times one third, but 81 times three is 243. So we have one divided by 243 times u to the power of three halves evaluated at 97, and then we'll subtract the evaluation at 16. So we'll have 97 to the three halves power minus 16 to the three halves power. All right, now we're almost done. We just need to simplify our answer a little bit more. We can't simplify 97 to the three halves power in any way, but we can simplify 16 to the three halves power because the three halves power is the same as taking the square root of this value and then cubing it, right? Another way to write 16 to the three halves power would be 16 to the one half power cubed because when you take a value to a power to a power, you can simplify that by multiplying those powers. So one half times three would be three halves. So this is the same as 16 to the three halves power. And the one half power of 16 is four because the one half power is the same as the square root of a value. And so the square root of 16 is four. And then we have four cubed and four cubed is 64, right? Four times four is 16 times four is 64. So, we can rewrite our answer to look like this. It will be equal to one divided by 243 times 97 to the three halves power minus 64. Okay, and then at this point, there's nothing that we can really simplify here. This is as simplified as our answer gets. I guess you could write it like this. You could have 97 to the three halves power minus 64 divided by 243. That would be the exact answer of the arc length. But if you wanna get a more general idea of what the actual arc length is, you can plug this value into your calculator to find that it is approximately equal to 3.668 and some more decimals. All right, so both of these answers are acceptable. This is the exact value, and this is approximately what the value would be, but both of them represent the arc length of the curve represented by these parametric equations on this interval. Okay, and so that's the process of finding the arc length of parametric curves. All you have to remember is that formula for the arc length and how to find the derivative of each of your parametric equations.
And so with that, this was the last example for this lesson video, but if you wanna see some more examples of calculating arc length of parametric curves, feel free to check out my examples video that I'll have linked at the end of this video, as well as in the description below. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments, but if you don't have any questions, this is all I had for now, so I will see you next time.